Shalom family, most high Christ blessed. Another episode, Curse from the Street Collabo. We got New Orleans, we got Austin, Texas, we got Tampa, we got New York, we got Raleigh, Gastonia. About to set it off for y'all, give y'all another good episode. We out here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and we going over voting. Stay tuned. Shalom. All right, family, I have here with me, Fan the Man. My name is Kenyon. Kenyon? Yes, sir. They call me Pernandi. What's that? Say one more time. Pernandi. Okay, y'all heard that. <laughs> Miriam. My name Todd. Uh, Lemuel and Marilyn Johns. Okay. Jermaine. 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 All right, so y'all married couple? Yeah. How long y'all been married? 46 years. 46 years. So y'all seen a lot. Y'all got a lot of wisdom, right, that y'all can give to the people. Mm -hmm. So what we want to know, okay, are y'all voters? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so this election is supposed to be coming up real soon, right? Correct. Right. Okay, who you think you voting for? I'm voting for Biden. Okay. What about you, sis? Biden. Okay. Why would you Why would you vote for Biden? Right now, the Democrats have a plan. Okay. To support the people, uh -huh. the infrastructure, right, and the community. Okay. Especially lower income, where the money needs to go. So when you said lower income, right, you hit something right there. Uh oh. What do you mean by lower income? Is there certain people that stay in that lower income? Right. I'm saying like college is not for everyone. Okay. okay. So we need more technical skills mm -hmm. so that we can employ those who work better with their hands. Okay. Right now, there's no support in that area. Okay, what about you, Mom? We're talking about the people who are working. The people who are working. Because the people who are working are the ones who are getting taxed the highest. Okay. The ones who are in the upper 10%, their tax rate is what? Three to four, three to five percent. Uh -huh. The ones in the lower is like 18 to 19 percent. So we're paying, the lower class is paying for the richer people. I mean, growing up right now, I'm, I'm 20 years old. Um, I mean, right now it's like, if it involves me, like, I just, I'm not really caring right now. Like, I'm big in sports right now. I'm in college. I'm playing college football at IU. So, uh, my opinion, it helps to a certain degree. Okay. You know, I, unfortunately, I feel as though the government likes to give us a little leeway, a, a little bit of leeway to make it think we kind of doing something, man. But unfortunately, this country has been ran by, you know, people that are on a scale of power and influence, bro, that it seemed like we can only do so much with. It's very important. OK. Can, very important. can you tell me why? Uh, well, I, I would say early on, I was taught at an early age um, from a father parents who you know, experienced you know, civil rights and so forth, but uh, one prime example of that was dad told me when I turned 18, don't come back to his house until I can show proof that I was registered to vote, as well as selective service. You know, uh, selective service is still the law mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. when you turn 18, those things. So I, I say I'm civic minded and uh, believe me, understand the sacrifice that folks uh, that look like us made that uh, didn't have the opportunity to vote, then that's one least thing I could do to honor their sacrifice. Okay. And, and that's just the minimum. But, yeah. Go. I like that. I like that a lot. Because um, you said you wanted to honor the sacrifice of the, our, our forefathers that came before us. So, let me ask you without asking you your age, how long have you been voting? <laughs> well, I don't mind. Yeah. I'll be 51 next week. Okay. Uh, so, I've been voting for, what's that, 33 years. 33 years. Okay. And in that time, what major changes have you seen occur in the black community as a result of voting? Well, that's a, I think it's a loaded question. It's a good question. I think voting at, compared to, you know, national elections and state elections, your local elections probably are the most important and those are the most important that impact you. So I can remember uh, how the black vote, if you will, changed my community where we were able to get our first black mayor when our black local community came together and made it happen. Okay. First thing first, uh, we were talking about voting. A lot of black people don't vote. Um, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but that's one thing. Another thing, you said issues going on with black people in America. Uh-huh. Um, shit. Excuse my language. But, I 
mean, I don't want to say racism, but you know what I'm saying? I, I never experienced racism, but I know a lot of people have. Yeah. Okay, all right. So when you said a lot of black people are not voting, are, are you saying that they should vote? I don't, I'm thinking that, but then at the same time, I don't think, we don't look too much into politics to even know what the, I mean, what the vote on, you know what I'm saying? Not a lot of us, you know what I'm saying? If anything, we go off the one person say, like, you know what I'm saying? We kind of like, not most, not, I ain't gonna say we, but some of us is kind of like sheep, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, somebody say, oh yeah, this dude, he, he messes with black people, you know what I'm saying? They just gonna be like, yeah, or we gonna vote for him. Uh, you know what I'm saying? We don't really got no type of, you know what I'm saying, black data of what we gonna vote on. Not most of us. I ain't gonna say all of us. Most of us. Now, now that's funny you said that because I know Joe Biden said if you don't vote for me, you're not. I won't vote for you. No, but remember, have no. you ever heard of what Joe Biden said? If you don't vote for me, you're not black. You ever heard that before? No, I ain't never heard you that. You never heard that before? He said that? Yeah, he said that. You got more questions, but I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. Should we vote or not? Do you think that uh, a man can change the world? Or could start or at least try to change the world? One man. One man. Because when we vote, we're voting for a person that could rule over, like a president. We're asking for this president that he'll help govern the world. Where it would be fair or some type of equality or where someone could benefit. Correct? Correct. So with that being said, should we vote? If we got the knowledge on it. If we have it, when he said the knowledge on, like what? Like like the politics on who we voting on. You know what I'm saying? We can't just be out here blind voting. Then we just, it's just like a lot of people picking the wrong significant other. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We don't want, you don't want to deal with this motherfucker for 18 years. You know what I'm saying? Even, it ain't going to be 18 years, but, you know. Most definitely. I mean, we even fought a revolution over that. You know what I'm saying? I think it was called taxation without representation. Okay. So I want to let people know by casting my vote how to spend that money. Okay, what about you? People fought to vote. Okay. So you have a right to vote. If you don't vote, that means that the people who fought for you to vote was in vain. And you don't want to do that. To me, honestly, I feel like, you know, most time the presidents don't control um, things like that. They have, they're, they're the puppets and it's people in the background that control that. You know what I'm saying? The people that got much more power we don't see. So honestly, you know, they, to me, they're like, yeah, they're like the puppets that play, you know, tell you what you want to hear, but the people in the background, they the really ones that do everything, you know. So honestly, I vote, I vote for, um, you know, what's right for my people, though. I don't, you know what I'm saying, but in the day, we are, to me, um, the president is really not um, in control as much as people think that he is, or, you know, a lot of the Congress, too. All of the legislative branches, you know, everyone in the government, you know, like people think the pres people think the country ran by the president. It's not ran by the president. You know, like there's people way above and beyond, you know, who really pull the strings and stuff like that. So, you know, I vote, but at the same time, unfortunately, I don't feel as though it really go anywhere just because of those higher ups that make sure they're going to want happen to want happen. Do you mean white people? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's yeah, keep it on hundred, yeah, man. Yeah, like, hey, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Let's oh, keep yeah. it on hundred. Yeah. I was just trying to dig that out of you because I knew yeah. where you was going, but yeah. a lot of our people today, we kind of like docile about it. Let's keep it on hundred. If it's white people, it's white people. You know what I mean? It is what it is. So you said you were able to vote to get a black mayor, right? What was he able to change for y'all in the city after he got elected? Well, I think a sense of pride. Mm -hmm. I think also, uh, yeah. You know, self-esteem and some motivation for students and so forth. I'm an educator, so I, I believe in all that tie-in that, you know, you have to see things that uh, are, you know, at your fingertips that you can reach, touch, feel, that you can aspire to be. If you don't see such, then it's hard for you to aspire to be. Okay. So if you can see a black mayor, you can see a black city councilman, then you can relate to be in such one day in your life. Okay. They all promise the same thing over and over and over again, yeah. right? And what really matters is when they sit in that chair, what do you think voting has gotten us? I mean, nowhere to be honest because, I mean, you had one party and then you have another party and they're not really doing shit for our economy. Hosea 8 and 4. The book of Hosea, chapter 8 and verse 4. They have set up kings, but not by me. So when the Bible says they set up kings, but not by me, 
that's right on what you said when we talked about Obama. He was like, hey, I was 12 years old, and you said, I know too much about him, and then they used him for other things. You said that, right? Yeah. But you said it lines with the Bible, whether you knew it or not, because read that part again. They have set up kings, but not by me. They have made princes, and I knew it not. Of their silver and their gold had they made them idols that they may be cut off. So when we set up these uh, princes, these rulers, or these presidents, we make them idols. The book of Daniel, chapter 4, and verse 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, uh -huh. and giveth it to whomsoever he will. You see that? So everything that's going on, you know, whoever gets in the seat, you know, the Most High God is ordaining that. He's the one that's controlling all of this, you know? This is why you said, you know, Oh, you don't think the president, he don't really control nothing. You're absolutely right. You don't. It, it, he, he doesn't. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. And set it up over it, the basest of men. You see that? All these rulers that's, with, with whatever land we in, the rulers that's over us, the Most High God calls them the basis of men. Now, I want you to examine something real quick. The basis of men. They're being called the basis of men. Aren't they in power? You see that? And then we, we are, you know, mo majority of us is in poverty and whatnot, right? Right. right. But the Most High God says that they are the basis of men. He still sets us above them. Yeah. But we got to do one thing. We got to come back to keeping God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Hey, give me Deuteronomy 17 and verse 15. Because this is a new thing that our people do. You know what that says? We have a loss of culture. So what we try to do is we try to follow the customs of everybody else and try to merge, you know, on that trend. Right. They vote, we vote. They dress the way, we dress the way. Right. They, you know what I'm saying? They act a certain way, we act a certain way. Watch what the Bible says. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17 and verse 15. Uh -huh. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, uh -huh. whom the Lord thy God shall choose. So who's supposed to choose somebody to be over us? God. God is. God you think God choosing those people to no, be? No, bro. Come on. He never did. Right, read. Really? One from among thy brethren. One from a who? From among thy brethren. Now, we looking at each other, right? You look like my brother to me. But when we look at, you know, the people who rule over us, do they look like us? No. Hell no. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, one from among thy brethren shalt thou set king over thee. Mm -hmm. Thou mayest not set a stranger Read over thee. again? What it say? Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee. It say thou mayest not set a stranger over thee. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask yourself, why are we voting? And it has nothing to do with the benefit of our people. Right. You look at the holidays that we celebrate. All of that is for the destruction of our people. Mm -hmm. But when you read in the Bible of all the days that we have was always about our salvation. Right. You understand that? Yeah, yeah. So, you got any feedback of what you heard from these scriptures today? Um, you know, I'm a firm believer. I'm okay. a firm believer, man. I don't know it all. I'm not all wise. I'm not all knowledgeable. I'm not God. But okay. at the same time, like I know the world, the state that it's in, it's not what God intended. Uh -huh. And unfortunately, centuries and centuries and centuries ago, the white people, hey man, I'm just saying the truth. They 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 manipulated and took control and made things how they wanted to make them. Now people try to resent God for oh why would he allowed us to happen. You know, listen man, he's we have free will for a reason. You right. know, he didn't intend for things to go how they went. But at the same time, it don't make it any right for them to do what they did to build the foundation they built for centuries upon centuries mm. to contribute to how the world is and the division, the disparity is right now, currently today in in. 2024. Okay. Hey, I, I I love that idea of representation in our communities. Help see uh, what the possibilities are out there. We need more black doctors, lawyers, uh, business owners, teachers. teachers. You know, all of that stuff to be able to help our people. But um, you believe in the Bible, right? I do. Okay. So let me get you a little bit of a biblical perspective on what is going to be the actual solution to the things the problems that we see in our communities you're right if i do that sure really. let me get solomon let me get isaiah 59 and verse 1 and 2 let me get that real quick i'm gonna show you because a lot of the problems that we see in the black neighborhoods drugs single parent households high incarceration rates all of those things have never been fixed by voting have they 
No. As a matter of fact, one of the people who black people voted for, Ronald Reagan, pushed the drugs into the community. Is that right? Uh, I'd say that may be, you know, some people's you remember perspective. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I ran country. Now watch this, watch this. The book of Isaiah chapter 59 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. So a lot of times in the black community, we try to think and wonder why it is that God has not solved our problems yet. And heard our cry. Right. Because it's honestly not going to be man that fixes it, it's going to be God that fixes it, right? So why haven't we gotten fixed yet? Come on. Verse 2. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. It says your iniquities or your sins is what has separated us from our God. Come on. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. That he will not hear. Now let me get Hosea chapter 6 and verse 1. So if our iniquity separated us from God, what's the solution? Is it voting? The Bible says no. The Bible says the solution is to come back to our God because when we do the things that is pleasing in his sight, then we will be able to fix our issues in our community. Watch this. The book of Hosea chapter 6 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Come and let us return unto the Lord. Says, let us return to the Lord because we've departed from him through our sin. Come on. For he hath torn and he will heal us. He have, he have torn us in, in slavery, crack in the 80s, single parent households, mass incarceration. He's torn us in those ways, but he have smitten mm -hmm. and he will bind us up. Mm -hmm. After two days will he revive us in the third day he will raise us up mm -hmm. and will <clears throat> excuse me and shall live in his sight and we shall live in his sight so over time the most high is raising up the spirit of the men and the women of the nation of israel to do what keep his commandments and repent and that's how we're going to be able to be saved Hey, Shalom family, Most High and Christ bless. We had another successful cuss from the streets out here in Myrtle Beach. We got the heartbeat of the people, got them talking about what's going on with the political system and with voting. Uh, Lord's will. We have some great interviews to show y'all. Most High and Christ bless from South Carolina. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, and share on all the YouTube videos. And with that, we say Shalom. 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 Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is